G'day, how you going? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video where I'm gonna paint a beautiful scene here. And I wanna give a big shout out to Elaine Audette for the beautiful reference picture I'm using today. I'm gonna to have it on a landscape layout and this is like the sun setting or the sun dawning, whatever you want. I'll put the size of my canvas up there for you so those people, some people wanna know what size it is. And I'll also get some colors floating up the screen there, just like that, isn't that amazing, yes. And I'm gonna bring you over here once they're finished going up. And some people go, I like the way you pick up your pencil and just lay it out, and that's what I'm gonna do today. So get on over here and let's lay it out. So halfway's about there, we want our horizon line. So in general, a horizon line can be quite straight if, it, if you've got it straight. But I wanna come across to about here, maybe a third, a bit over a third of the way, and sort of tilt it down just a little bit down there like that, because we're gonna get perspective down into this horizon line here. I try and steer away from doing everything straight, you know, and rows of trees and a row of this and a row. I try to give you those perspective things to go on in your painting there, all right? And we wanna have the impact of our sun around here somewhere. And we're gonna have these trees coming up the painting there and billowing there. And then they'll be coming around here as well. Something like that. And the snow is kind of up. And then the rest, we'll, I'll put some birch, birch trees right here. Some birch trees and a beautiful sky. So I'm gonna work out the sky now. We're gonna do the sky first. So see here, I can see here, I've already got that as me sky. So I've got this yellow brush. I call it a putter on a brush because sometimes you, most people have a little flat like this and they're putting their skies in. But this one here, this one don't muck around. It gets things done. And I'm gonna use it. So what I've got is some craft white. I call it craft white, but it's just simple titanium white, but a looser bodied one. It's not gesso. Gesso's flat. This one has a bit of a sheen to it. And I'm using this putter on a brush to mix that craft paint and the retarder together. So acrylic paints can dry quick if it's your first time getting into acrylic art. And like I said, I wanna put this just in the sky area. So I'm gonna crisscross it in there, get it in there, into the sky area. Plenty of, and this is gonna make my sky colors blend if I'm gonna do a beautiful blending of colors or clouds. Now what I do, I simply get that on there, okay? And then I'll go into the tip of this brush and I stroke it left and right. And see, it's beautiful, firm, controlled. It's put on there, no mucking around. Now we're ready to put our sky color on there. Now down on the palette, I've got cerulean blue, I've got permanent alinzarin, I've got Indian yellow, and I've got a mid-tone gray. These are the colors I wanna use for my sky. If you don't have these exact colors, use something similar. I wanna pick up the cerulean blue, the cerulean blue on my putter on a brush. Now I'm not putting retarder in any of these colors. It's already on the canvas there with that stuff, okay? And where, remember I drew my sun there? So pretty much around that area, about there, I want the yellowy glow, so I'm gonna leave that out, and I'll get this blue in there. Just see how it's spreading across that white retarded paint. It's beautiful, there we go. It's in there, it's on there. I'll wipe it. Now I wanna stroke that left and right all the way across the painting. There we go, just like that. Have a look at it, always stop and analyze your work. See how it's going, what's going on there? All good, all good? Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now down here, we need the Indian yellow. So I'm gonna pick some of this up and get into my brush and concentrate that way down the bottom there in this corner, so it's here. Get it in there, get it in there. Now get to that blue, turn it around. You can stamp it on now when it's getting into that blue. Stamp it on, control what you're putting there. Look at that. Now you might get a bit of green here, but that's okay. There we go, we'll, we'll even get some of this tinkering up there. Stamp it up just like that. What I'm doing is I'm laying like this in there. 
to give it that sense of clouds looking that way in the sky, the vibe of it all. There we go. Now I'm going to simply wipe that brush on the towel down here. Now I want to just stroke this left and right in tip of the brush and just go into that blue just like so. Pull it in, pull it in. Nice and easy. Beautiful. Now we're going to get some white, titanium white. So we will grab a fan brush, pick up some titanium white. It's not the craft paint. See how thick this is? It's a different consistency. And I want to get my glow where the sun is. So watch here. Where do I put my sun? About there. So I'm going to uh, 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 in, turn the brush around, get it in there and start pulling it out, pulling it out. And look at the brushes doing it. It's making up all this artsy type of behavior within our paint there. We're getting that there. Now I'm going to wipe this brush. I'm going to pick up some more on the corner of it because I want it more intense there. So I'm picking up some more titanium white on the corner there and I want it really intense white here. There we go. Getting it in there. Now I'm just using the brush to kind of blend it down, feather it in, so to speak, into that yellow. There we go. Now grab this magenta or permanent linser and put a little bit into that blue there, okay? Get a bit of it into your blue, whatever blue you used. I used cerulean blue. There we go. We're getting that purple shadow colour we want for our clouds. Now I'm just getting it on the corner of my fan brush. Those shapes there, there we go. One there, that yellow that I put on, I'm just going into that yellow there. This is the shape I'm going for. Get something up there. Remember when I put the yellow on, I was going like that. Well, this is the same principle I'm going with this brush now. I'm just This bit's of yellow there, I'm just killing that with this stuff. Blend it up there. Maybe a little bit tinkering over here somewhere. It's just got that colour there. That blue's still wet. And I'm going to wipe that brush, just wipe it. And I want to sit some of that down. So I'm going to use the corner of my fan brush again, just to sit some of that down, because I now want to add the white cloud to that. This is already the dark colour. There we go. Now I'm picking up titanium white again. And we want to get some white into these clouds. So let's start with these top ones first. Well, I'm pressing light. Why am I pressing light? Because see when I press light, you've got a bit of white and a bit of this colour they've already got there blending through. See when I started there, it was just heavy and it's just full on white. You want to control what you're doing. So I'm controlling now what I'm doing. Different way of painting clouds, but there's so much fun when you know what to do. And we're leaving this darker colour underneath the cloud. And if anything, I'll just show you with this one. See, I'm blending that into that purpley dark colour there. It's a bit heavier coming out here. Blend the bottom in. Then we can make the actual shape of the cloud with the white. Okay, you've done that. Pick up a blending brush. Now you message me on Facebook if you want the blending brushes I use. There's the corner of my brush and there's the, the base of it there. I'll probably go to the corner and it creates turmoil. Go to the whole base of it now, pull the corner again, turmoil, twist it, drag it. See all the wonderful things that I'm doing just with this blending brush here. It's amazing what it can do when you know how to use it. Pull that out of the painting there turmoil, the, the corner, the base, twist, you're adding turmoil. And look at that, wouldn't you say that's quite an easy but fantastic fun cloud to paint. Now we're gonna add the same to the he, the others here, pretty much. This one, see how that's gone lighter now? I mean duller. We can bring this one in front of that by adding heavier white. Okay, coming out there and then doing that. This, the blue paint on the canvas still retarded and wet. I want to keep that quite brighter there. And twist, get rid of those weird lines. And just, when you see cloud shapes there, leave it. You don't have to over blend it. Some people can over blend. Drag it, boom. See how easy that was? And I'm just going to keep doing that. Something there, leaving that darker colour there. 
turn it around, get something on this one here. And maybe something here. Grab your blending brush. I'm doing it quick because I know what I'm doing, but when you learn, I'll corner the brush, the, the, the base of the brush, turn more, twist, drag. I'm trying to rush now because some of this paint is starting to dry up. You might hear by aircon going. It's quite a warm day here in Perth, Western Australia. Today, 27th of February, 2022. That's what today is. And we'll get that blended up there. And we'll get something right here. See this yellow in there? I want to get something right in the lot of that. Blend it from the middle out. There, yeah, from the middle out. And now I want to add the actual glare within here. So I've got white. There's, I want to put the white glare now. So from about here, I'll get mainly here. Just somewhere about there, not too much. Grab, get all this there. Grab that blending brush again, and then blend that white so it's like a glare into that blue and yellow color. There we go, look at that, beautiful. And once I put the other trees in front of this, it'll make sense of what's happening within our painting there. If it's your first time watching my videos, hit the thumbs up, give me a comment. Tell me what you reckon. Tell me how you found me. And we'll put a bit of white glare right here. I want some white glare right here. It's gonna make sense. There we go, because we're gonna put dark stuff in front of that. Now look at that. Just looking at that on its own, you might think it's complicated. I'm going to hair out of there. You might think it's complicated, but when you know how to do it, it's not that hard at all. And that's why I stress and say you can do it. But if you feel you can't do it, just need practice. So down here, I've got my titanium white and we'll get some more cerulean blue. Now, this white is my snow color, but I don't want it pure white. So I'm going to tease it with some of this blue it's going to be quite a dark tint get it to the value you want so this will be just in between the trees where there's gaps between them and you'll see the snow but obviously the snow is not white it's this color because it's full of shadow and from about this side of the sunset I want to where will we say about here there I could have bought the sky up a bit I'll do that there there we go getting it now this is going to come to about I can go beyond I'll go beyond I want it to about here there but like I said I can go beyond so I went beyond see why did I go beyond well you'll find out why because we're gonna now this is just the darkness in the trees of the snow. So before I mix up the tree colour and put that in there, I, want, I might as well just paint the rest of the snow in here. So it's gonna, it's obviously white snow, but it's gonna have shadows all over the place. So I'm gonna use the craft white and we've got some yellow. So I'll use this to base it up. I'm trying to get the bit without the retarder in it, but it doesn't matter if it has. And I'll quickly just get this colour all over the base, join it up to that blue there. Pretty much to there, join it to that blue. Then I can grab that blue and put back. And now I've got on my palette down there, I've got the colours that I need. So now I'm just scratching that into that blue, see how I merge that, just like so. This brush is so good for getting the paint done, it don't muck around. Now I want to put the sunsetting colours across the snow. So we have some Indian yellow here, we'll get some of this colour. Very lightly, from about maybe here, all the way across to there. We're going to have just some of this. And we can always grab the white and then replace it back. So we've got that scooting across there like so. About there, we could probably get some out here. That's 
that's okay. Not much there. <clears throat> right across. I just want. I'm just trying to get a little slitherization of a piece. Oh, too hard there. A little slitherization of a piece there. That'll do. Now I've got some red violet here. We've, no, we've added that yellow. So I've got some red violet here. We'll grab some of this. Don't want it too loud. Let's lighten some of it up a bit. There we go. And we want some slivers of this in there. So just, oh yeah. Look at that beautiful, nice slivers there. See how easy that put on a brush, put them in there, bang. Get a bit booterating down here. Another one here. Now with these, I'm making them long like that to create that <clears throat> vibe that I'm looking for. What's actually in the reference picture, a bit over here. And there is that. We'll grab some of the gray. It might gray it up a bit, which is fine. Yeah, so grab some of the gray into that. Both sides a bit more, because at the front foreground, I'm just noticing in the reference picture. See here, that's why I'm adding the gray to get this bit here in there. Oh, by the way, that's the reference picture by Elaine Orday. And that's what I'm gonna try and paint today, believe it or not. So we wanna get this colored all across the front. A bit more gray in it. I'm just adding a bit more gray coming across here. Right across there and scooting. Now these brush lines, there's my son, so I'm gonna aim them to the sun there like that. Look at that. Get that blended into there. Don't be too crazy about it, Ian. Get rid of some of them like that. I just want this having this vibe here, more darker grey there, I'm putting more full on grey now just to and our whites will draw the actual detail in this snow but this is just getting the actual bits and bobs that it needs in there there we go so I've got some more cerulean blue on that colour that I mixed the blue mountain on with and I'm making it a bit darker pretty much from about here, I want the base of this just simply darker like so and then I'll we'll use a different brush up there to really detail the edges of this blue colour. I'll put a bit of water with it to get it to transfer a lot better. Up there, there we go. Come. All this stuff here, don't worry about that. It looks a bit mumble jumble, but that's going to have trees all over it. This is just stuff you're going to see in between it all. Now down here I've got a mongoose fan brush and I've got perylene green. It's pretty much like your dark green. You've got a, a dark green that you've got and mixed a bit of black with it. And I want to use this. Coming over the sunset there. Now use a brush you find it's going to make these kind of trees or the trees you want on this hill. It doesn't have to be pine trees. I'm just using simply what's in the reference, but you can have them different types of trees, Australian type of trees if you want, gum trees, whatever. Onto a um, flat brush now, because I want to control the base where they're touching the snow. Pretty much there. Load more onto their brush and come along, fix all this up. I'm going to do this all the way along here, and as I do it, I'm going to join up. See this mumble jumble, snotty nonsense there? I'm going to panel beat that and fix that up as well, because that's what you do when you paint. When you've made mistakes, you just panel beat them and get on with it, eh? Hey? Yeah. I'll fix a lot of this up, but this, you get the gist of what the guru is doing. I'm just simply doing this, getting it more even. Now what I'm gonna do while I've got this color, I'm gonna come along the other side, which is here. These are, go by the picture, this is a bit of a smoother mountain here. So see that, remember that white mist I put there? The glare, I'm just coming under that. 
joining that to there. And this can come, where are we? To there, and then sort of block that in, in an artistic way. We're gonna get a beautiful chunk of glare hanging over this as well. This is far away, this bit. Now I will get a, because this is green, I will get a bit of highlights in some of there to make it look more green. So what I'll do is I'll just grab this chunk of yellow, Indian yellow here, and we'll see what that's gonna do. Yeah, that's all right. It's created some kind of highlighted color. Try and get some in there. So with what's in the brush, I've just grabbed some cadmium yellow some of that in there there we go I'm gonna grab Malcolm my mouse stick and just see if I can get some nice crisp oh yeah that's a little bit just just some ginger ginger highlights in there gingerly highlights some of it and if I've done too much well I just simply grab the dark color just two pockets of it Now we'll just add the darker green and that darker green I'm just going to pick up and watch how I'm just going to sit down a lot of that um, bright stuff. See where's a lot of the, like there's a big pocket of it here. So let's just gingerly wet the brush and sit them down a bit. Not too much, backwards and forwards till you're happy with it. Now before we get on to our next bit, see where these trees are just on the snow here? I just want to set them down, grabbing some of that dark colour and this blue here, right? Here we go, there we go. So I've darkened, get some of that green in there. I've darkened some of that up with that perylene green, okay? Find out what brush is going to work for you and you're just simply going to Sit some of that stuff down here and there, leaving gaps in between each one. And we're going to add our shadows now for this front bit. This colour here, we want to shadow it, so I'm simply grabbing it, put some more water in my brush, grabbing it, and we'll use that perylene green because that's dark. There we go, it's made it a darker value. And we're going to come right across here now, so we've got some. There, there, this is all darker blue here. Now, it's important with these kind of shadows, it's not hard, you might think it's hard, but it's not hard, to get the little veins, the little gaps of white. I'll show you what I mean. Look, watch, this is gonna come across there, and see I'm leaving a gap in between it all. I've left a gap in between that and this one. Those little gaps are your details. Come into there. Now if you ever want to use the same reference picture I'm using, if I've given a shout out to the person's reference picture in any of my videos, you just simply message me on Facebook and say, can I have the reference picture that you used? And I'll send it to you. Or you can, some people can use my actual tutorial as a reference, or if you want the actual reference picture, I'm quite happy to send it off to you. And you just keep looking at the reference, going backwards and forwards, getting your values where you need them. See, there is a nice big, dark bit coming across here which I like. Now I've got my little scrumbling brush, scrubbing brush, it's like a little blender. It was a flat but it's all bent out at the ends now and it's got quite a, it's good for doing sorts of mist and fog and stuff. So I want to use this to get my glare here. So I've got my Indian yellow here. I've got some 
cadmium yellow there as well if I might need some. And I'm going to put a little bit of white in that. That's just to make it more dense and thicker, not so see-through-y. I want this. See those trees? I want to just get this over those trees. Don't worry too much about the sky. Start in there and bring it over the tree and just blend it like a smoke fog over those trees in that area there. This is how you'll get it coming over your trees. Not too much. Now I'm grabbing the white to intensify the middle area. Okay, the middle area now, which is right here. There we go. And I can do that. Grab some of the red violet and these violety bits here. I do want to get just the sharpest like that, some lines in some of this, okay? It's just adding for more bullshit detail. You can do it. Now we're going to get a bit of the yellow as well. I'll put some of that magenta in it. I mean that violet, just to get it a darker value of the Indian yellow. See what I've done there? I've got a darker value of the Indian yellow. Because my yellow here, I want some... <laughs> I'm coming off the painting, then I'll bring it in. Just some vibes of this. This is probably a bit too dark, but it'll... I'll get by with it. Some there. Some there. I'm picking up just titanium white. Working out where I want some nice. I want to come across, so I want to. Just like that. Got a nice bit right across here. Bits of white veining through. See when I'm pulling this into this colour? See what it's doing there? It's looking all right. Some of... Those veins that you wanted in between there, you could probably get them in as well. For the trees, I'm simply going to use the grey. I'll get that wet. I'll start with a darker value first. So I want a little... I've just got some black there some black and tint this the grey I want. Pretty much the darker colour will be the first colour just for me tree and we'll make these birch trees. I'm just using a flat brush from there. Birch tree. That'll do. I'm going to map it in like I'm doing now and then I'll probably detail it off camera, you know, just make them thicker. But I'm going to show you how I make them thicker, what's going on in my mind. Now I want a around something like this, I don't know what you call it, but I'm going to use the same paint. I've got it a lot more wet and I want to node the buggery out of that tree as well. So like, see here, let's start getting it the thickness you want. I want it right in front of that snow there. I might have to put that snow back in front of it to sink it back. Coming up, let nodes happen, boom. Get your paint inky enough. This is a far away tree, so it's not as big as the ones that are going to be in the foreground. See there, node things, if a branch is going to come out, node it. I'm not familiar with birches, I can only go by the picture.
what if we do that? Yeah, it's sort of working. It's... Now I'm grabbing this brush. <laughs> it sounds like I've done it before. I'm grabbing this brush and I'm just flicking it out, making these scratchy open limbs. See there? Get them from the trunk though. Now, we've got a couple here. Uh, there's quite a few in the reference picture, but you know what, I'll just put a few less because I'm making it my own. So we have one about here, coming all the way up. Bang, right off the painting there, about the thickness there. So that's about that one. So what I'm gonna do, like I did before, I'm just going to map the actual foundation of the tree in there, let's say it's backbone, it's skeleton, so there's one there, one about here, right? Well, I wanna put that one there because that, I love the way it's got the shadow there. So we've got one about here, coming all the way up there and off the painting there, and another one next to it, which is about here, all the way off the painting there. Uh, we got that one, got that one, that one, that, and this one here. Right off the painting, right up there. So I'm just going to fatten them up. I'll do one just to show you, so if those people think, well, how's he going to do it? I want to see. So let's try this one here. Get the edge, the shape. Boom. Just go to the snow like that. And I want the edge pretty much hard on both sides, sharp on both sides. Okay, and you watch how I do a birch tree, even though I've never seen them in real life, but I reckon they look all right artistically. They've got the vibe going about them, you know what I mean? Now I've got burn umber here, and I'm kind of tainting it with some white, not too much white, burn umber and white. I want some of this burning on the trees. So where have we got this one here? I'm gonna look in me, I was gonna say me mirror, I'm gonna look in me monitor just to see how this color's going. Something like that. Yeah, that's okay. Now see, I've got a hard line now, I wanna just sort of scratch that away, pick up some more, have a bit at the top of the tree there. I'm using the brush to come around the trunk, if anything, in my brush strokes. I'm not, I don't want to paint the whole tree this colour. Some of this, this is probably, won't even see much of this colour, but it's there. It's going to make up the um, footprint of the tree at the end of the painting. You might not see it, but it's, without it, you will notice the difference. Try and keep your edges sharp. Now I've got me grey, I'm just going to wash that brush out. I've got me grey there. I like to, when I do my birches, use a flat brush like this. I've got me grey. And I like to make mine grey looking. And then what I do is I... Keep it... Round, sharp on the edge there. How's that looking? I hope it's looking birchy, yeah. Do these bands first. Nodes. I call them nodes, they've got like nodes. I'm, what I'm doing, see there I go there and there, this bit here, I'm leaving that because I'm going to have a black bit there. They look a bit mumble jumbly at the moment, but you watch. I did one a while back with some birches and they turned out all right. I sometimes have to look at my own videos to see how I did it. Here we go, we're making birch trees. If I'm doing something wrong in these birch trees, let me know. Or if I pulled it off and they look all right, give me the thumbs up. But we want to get that vibe of it happening of a birch.
Now this dark color here, grab some more black and mix into that so it's a lot darker. Not too dark, just darker. And I like to, let's see, oh that's too black, too black. Get bits, remember those V bits I was making? Uh, <laughs> I like to get some of them all the way across. Pull some from the other side as well, just like that. No, I call them nodes, but I don't know what they're called. They just... Some of them have lots of lines going across them too, I've noticed. Or if they don't, it makes the... Get the edges a bit rough, you know, like bits tinkering out. Grabbing a liner and getting the dark colour. I want to come, let's say here, we'll bring a branch from there. Twist this, twist it. Some of these, where's another one? We'll get one from behind now. Try and go into a point if you can. We'll bring one, it's coming towards us, towards us, then it's going down, and then it's going up. See how I made that look? Instead of making your trees looking flat, like a pressed flower, you got the branches coming out from all areas of the tree. We'll do one here. He can come there, boom. There we go. And these can have as much detailed snow on them as you want. Oh, this one's going to have to go down. I'm just putting some finer ones in this tree here. I'm just up, letting the node happen and flicking out, flicking out. Come on, <laughs> here we go. Now I'm grabbing some of the Indian yellow and the burnt umber, because I want the burnt umber and the Indian yellow and maybe some white in it to get a nice glare up the side of the breeze there. The very edge is lit by that setting sun or the rising sun. Where our black bits are, I'm not really doing it in there. You could do this before you add those um, branches, get that sunlight hitting this side of the trees here, giving it more, more of a bullshit effect, more realistic. Now if you think you can't do this, just do it to the degree you're comfortable with and depending how far you are in your art journey, your art will slowly develop and evolve into what you desire it to want to be looking like. And now we will add our shadows. That's the fun bit, I love shadows. Shadows is what bring art alive. So we'll do this tree shadow sort of coming up over and over this way. So we're gonna grab the gray, not too gray, I want a bit of a brown in it, a bit of a, a browny gray maybe. Looking at it, maybe a little bit of black. 
yeah that's there we go I'm happy with that that's the vibe I'm looking for and I want to come and I've got a fork in my tree and this is going to pretty much come right off the painting there there I've got a bit coming off there okay that's going to be roughly my shadow so the inside of it condensed but the edges of it can be a bit furry let's just see how we go get rid of that marker line that I use there to mark it out with now these bits are going wider because they're fanning out it's the same trunk but they're fanning out and you watch because I've made them wider how more real they look just this bit here coming a bit wider get it wet enough nice and sharp And the further away the shadow is coming from the object, the more blurry the edges get. Okay, I've mixed up the paint again and now we're doing these ones. So, where we got? We got, let's say, this one here. Nice line there, bang. And then this one's coming around. Bang. We're going to have some snow in the pothole here as well. So these lines are a little bit different angle to that one because of the perspective. God, it's getting bigger and bigger there. Calm down. See only there and wider. This is nothing like the reference picture here, but I'm just making it my own way now. That's joining up to there. Don't have it too see-through in. Now I'm just, I've just got another little detailed brush, a little dagger brush, and I've grabbed some of the yellow and the white. It's at the bottom of these trees here. We do have snow building up. So there's snow here, and it's coming all the way around there. Get it a bit more inkier, and it's coming up this tree there. bit of snow up here and then I'll highlight this with white just to give it that real look I've tried that I'm getting my snow on it now so I want to make it look that color that I put on before that's the darkest gives it the value so where's this one here we've got some snow here just wrapping around Get there, nice point there, and then bring it around up that bit there. Let it billow up there. I don't know why I put that big. I'll get rid of that, that's a bit too much. You could have some. No building up on the fork of the tree. I'll put a bit of darkness around that, but what I want to do is just have some maybe snow detail here. Let me have a look at that. 
Is that looking all right? Yeah, that's okay. Get rid of that. So I'll try and put a darker spot within it just to kill it. Hopefully it's just sinking things down. I'm using the, the shape of the edge of this brush to get these sort of mounds in the snow here. Get some pure white. Just before I sign it, some of these sticky out branches have collected some snow. So they're just getting a bit of detail snow on them. These little details help what make your painting complete. The odd blob, we'll get some gathered up in the fork of the tree here. Big blob of snow on there. Blob up there, I don't know. You can keep going to the cows come home. Right, we'll give this a signature and we'll whack a frame on it. So leave me a comment below. If you have any questions, put your comment question in below and I'll answer it in my next Friday Night Live with your name. That's what my Friday Night Live is all about, connecting with my followers and also check out my other links. Patrons, thank you very much for supporting my content every month. All right, whack a frame on there, see how she looks. I reckon that looks all right. Oh yeah, that's not too shabby. We've got a sunlit birch scene. We've got distance, nothing's looking flat and just in, you know, like a deck of cards painted all up. I love to try and show beginners how you can get depth in the painting. And I know you can do it. Well, I had a lot of fun doing that. I hope you learnt something along the way. And if you did, leave me a comment below. Check out my next video. And also tell your friends if you like what I'm doing. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.